Come on, this is the 11th entry in the franchise. There's no way that Mega Man 11 could be good. They didn't even name anything interesting like Mega Man The Quest for Peace or Mega Man Forever After. It's just Mega Man 11. That's pretty dumb. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd, the show where we're definitely never up to date on anything. I was gonna try to play all 10 of the Mega Man games before Mega Man 11 came out, and I only made it through the first three, and then Mega Man 11 came out and I played it, and, and then uh, life stuff happened, and it's been a month since the release date. So here we go, everybody. Trendy Tuesday, it's definitely trendy. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today is Trendy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. On Tuesdays, we take a look at media that's trendy, or media that came out a month ago because my schedule got all mixed up. But here we are. We're going to talk about it. The myth, the legend, Mega Man 11. The Mega Man franchise has now been around for 30 years. Now there's 10 entries in the main franchise, 11 now including Mega Man 11, eight entries in the Mega Man X franchise, the second most popular, or maybe it's more popular, I don't know. And then there are dozens and dozens of spin-offs. Now I've only had the fortune of playing through the first three. I've talked about one and two on an episode of Your Everyday Nerd, as well as most of the first Mega Man X game, though I never did beat the final boss there. Anyways, I wanna talk about the game that made my panties wet. That's right, Mega Man 11 made my panties wet. Did it make yours? Because it sure did mine. Mega Man 11 just released last month, and I gotta say, I think it might be the best Mega Man game yet. Now I know what you're thinking, but Zach, you haven't even played all the Mega Man games. How can you make this judgment already? Re! Well, buckle up everybody, because even if this video might be clickbait, it's not. It's click worthy. There's a difference. I still think Mega Man 11 might be the best one yet. I strongly believe Albert's research must stop. <sighs> Light! We can't build the future on your empty optimism. Even though I haven't played all the Mega Man games, I have played the first five. So here's what I can tell you based off of that knowledge alone. Mega Man 1 was bad. It established the jump and shoot blue bomber formula that we've grown to love. But other than that, the music is lackluster, the level design is not that great, and I, the bosses were fine. Plus, there's the whole guts man falling thing that I really hate. I did an entire video on Mega Man 1. I don't really like it at all. Mega Man 2 came out a year later and it reestablished what Mega Man was. In fact, it did it much better. Not only does it have a kick-ass soundtrack, the level design is pretty good and consistently fair most of the time. The bosses are much better. There's more content. Mega Man 2 has always been my favorite Mega Man game out of the few that I've played. It's just been the one that I've always returned back to, always enjoyed playing, and until Mega Man 11, I considered it the best or definitive Mega Man experience. Mega Man 3 introduces the slide mechanic. It's pretty pivotal to the Mega Man franchise, at least for most of it, and honestly, I think it's just more of Mega Man 2, except for a little bit less level design that's good. And I, I still prefer Mega Man 2 over Mega Man 3. A video is coming about that this Thursday. Mega Man 4 and 5 is really just more Mega Man. It adds more content and more story stuff. But overall, I still think it just slightly improves some of the stuff for Mega Man 2. And Mega Man 2 is still my favorite out of the first five. Now, I can't speak fully about Mega Man 6 through 10 considering I haven't actually played them, so I don't have any experiences with them. But what I can say is the facts that I know about these games. Mega Man 6 is very similar to 3 through 5. It's basically another Mega Man 2, except maybe certain things are slightly better, but again, I still think I'm going to prefer 2 over 6. Mega Man 7 and 8 bring a new code of paint to the franchise. We get HD graphics and cell shaded graphics and it's really cool. It's really awesome. But by what I've heard, they're really kind of lackluster overall. Mega Man is a lot bigger inside the frame and it makes it a little bit... 
I don't know, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing them because I like the look of them, but I've heard that overall they're easier and also worse than the other Mega Man games to come before it. After we got more story stuff and HD graphics for Mega Man 7 and 8, Capcom decided to go back to the old NES days with Mega Man 9 and 10, which I think is completely interesting. In fact, there's not even a slide mechanic in these games. It really goes back to the Mega Man 2 days. So once again, we're looking at games that are trying to go back to the feel of Mega Man 2. That's what I perceive, that's what I'm seeing. It's been eight years since Mega Man 10 came out, and I'd argue that with Mega Man 11, we are seeing more change in the franchise than we've ever seen before. In fact, the difference between Mega Man 1 and Mega Man 2 is, in my opinion, infinitesimal compared to the difference that Mega Man 11 makes to the franchise compared to the games that came before it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look at the things that I think Mega Man 11 did really well as far as a traditional Mega Man game, the few things that I think it didn't do that well, because there are a few nitpicks that I have with the game, and most importantly, the big changes and differences that makes Mega Man 11, in my opinion, the best Mega Man game yet. In fact, it made my dick rock hard. Like, like rock man, you think? Think his dick ever gets hard? For starters, Mega Man 11 feels like a Mega Man game. I know, right? Polygon, you can put that in your articles. I know you were talking about Spider-Man a lot, how it made you feel like Spider-Man. Well, Mega Man 11 really makes you feel like Mega Man. My point here is that even though there are so many new differences and additions to the series, this still very much feels like a classic Mega Man game. It doesn't really bring in a whole lot of elements from X. It doesn't feel like it's a spin-off of any sense. It is still a classic Mega Man game, just with these new improvements. This is interesting to me because we've seen franchises really mix it up a lot lately. Super Mario Odyssey had the whole capture mechanic, which definitely makes it look different than all the other Mario games, but at the end of the day, it's still a Mario game, and it feels like a Mario game. Breath of the Wild is one of the most different Zelda games we've seen to date, and arguably, it doesn't even feel that much like a Zelda game. And this is what I saw that was really cool about Mega Man 11 compared to these other franchises. It's good for a franchise to have a core identity. It's nice to mix things up. Change is 100% a good thing, but if that change interferes with the core identity of the series, I think we can see more negatives than positives. With Mega Man 11, it's clear from the very beginning that this is a Mega Man game. Your prime objective is still to jump and shoot, you still got eight robot masters, you go to the Wily stages, you beat Dr. Wily, you take their powers, it's still very much a Mega Man game. This makes all these new additions and improvements to the series a positive and not a detriment. Not only that, but if for some weird reason you don't want to use any of the new improvements, then you could just play this like a traditional Mega Man game. Nobody's stopping you. You really don't have to do much but slide, jump, and shoot like Mega Man 3. This game is all about options. Hmm, all systems nominal. You're in great shape, Blockman. All thanks to you, Doc. You built me rock solid! There is technically a story here which adds more to the mythos of Mega Man. Basically, Dr. Wily and Dr. Light were college buddies and Dr. Wily was working on this double gear system and that's going to be more important with the gameplay than anything. But I, I don't feel the need to harp on the story that much because while it's actually somewhat good, it doesn't really matter because when you play a Mega Man game, you play it for the gameplay. I do want to say though that this college that Dr. Wily and Dr. Light went to we need to figure out where it is because these robotic institutions in the future really need to make sure they screen for these types of people because Wily is clearly insane and they still let him be in control of artificial intelligence. That's not okay. That's not okay at all. Once again, we have eight robot masters or bosses in the Mega Man universe. We have Block Man, Fuse Man, Blast Man, Acid Man, Tundra Man, Torch Man, Impact Man, and Bounce Man. 
I have to say that these are my favorite bosses to date. When I think of reasons why I liked Mega Man 2, it was because the gameplay was fun and the level design was really good and the music soundtrack was so good, but the bosses, they were always just fine. And I feel like for the majority of this series, the bosses are always just fine. They don't really have that much personality to them. And then you have bosses like Heat Man, which is literally just a Zippo lighter. So I don't know what they were thinking. When I look at Mega Man 11 bosses, these are pure style. Each of these bosses are characters and each of these characters have personality. And while the voice acting isn't completely that good, it's, it's not great. You can change it to Japanese voice acting, which does make it better. And even then, I kind of grown to like the cheesiness of the English voice acting. Not only are these bosses likable, but they're also super fun. Because of the new double gear system, which we can use, the bosses also are able to use them and that gives them a second phase to their fight. These become more challenging, but overall they just become fun. And I've never really preferred the boss fights in any Mega Man game, but these I ended up playing multiple times over and over again. What's even better is just like every other Mega Man game, once you beat a Robot Master, you get to take their powers. And these are some of the most fun abilities I've seen in any Mega Man game yet. Not only are these weapons super fun, they're also really powerful, especially once you use them with the double gear system. And not to mention in previous installments of Mega Man, when you use a Robot Master's ability, your suit changes color. In Mega Man 11, your suit changes completely. It adds so much more personality to this game and I love it. But of course, before you beat every single Robot Master, you must go through their stages. The stages in Mega Man 11 are, for the most part, technically easier overall, but this is the case for a couple of reasons. The main reason is the new additions and improvements in the mechanics in the Mega Man franchise. We now have the double gear system, which is essentially like putting more RAM in a computer. There's the power gear, which gives Mega Man the ability to make more powerful shots, including the Robot Master's weapons. And then there's the speed gear, which slows everything else down, therefore making Barry, Barry. I thought I was talking about the Flash for a second. Whoa, I've been watching that show like crazy and it makes Mega Man a lot faster. So these new abilities technically make the game easier because they could be considered OP, but each stage is much longer than a traditional Mega Man level. It's kind of this weird contradiction because technically this game becomes less of a challenge, especially when you have the fact that Rush Coil is unlocked from the very beginning, the double gear system, the fact that the Robot Master's abilities are pretty great, and when you pair that with the double gear system, it makes, you can screen wipe almost with some of these abilities, it's amazing. Of course, there are still some limitations, just like every other Mega Man game, the Robot Master's abilities can only be used for a certain length of time as long as you have the weapon energy available. The double gear system also works on a timer. You can only use it for so long before it runs out and these are like mere seconds. So it's not like you're an all powerful being. You just have these tools that you can use, which means resource management is still very much a thing in Mega Man. Speaking of resource management, we get a shop this time and it's, let me tell you, it's pretty ascetic. I mean, you can buy extra lives and energy tanks and weapon fills and all of these different awesome items that just make the game a little bit easier. But you don't want to waste all of your money on these temporary items because this game has upgrades. That's right. This is the game that just keeps giving and giving. It's beautiful. Everything from auto charging to when you beat the game, you get a piece of equipment that allows you to use the boss weapons and the double gear system infinitely. <laughs> and then you can go back and play through the game and it becomes actually easy. It's really fun. After you beat the A Robot Master stages, you go straight into, pff, I got a surprise for you because you'll never guess where you go in this Mega Man game. You go straight to the Dr. Wily stages. Who would have guessed? Oh, this isn't, this isn't particularly new. One of the things that I like about Mega Man 11 is that it's just long enough 
and just short enough to be a full experience. Because after you beat each of these eight Robot Master stages, you might feel a little bit of tiredness coming because each of these stages are so long, but then you go straight into the Wily stages, which is hype, and there's no like extra content that they have to push in between, like Dr. Kosak stages and Mega Man 4 or some other thing. It's, it's four Wily stages. They're really, really good. I love them. You'll love them. Play Mega Man 11. <laughs> I will say though that I do have some nitpicks with uh, the Wily stages because you get to fight uh, the Yellow Devil again. I just beat this guy in Mega Man 1 recently. I just beat him in Mega Man 3 recently. And here he is again. Mega Man 11. You don't get the pause glitch either. Pause glitch doesn't work. Doesn't work. So I just ended up really suicidal. So um, if you've ever had suicidal thoughts, Please call the number on the screen. Um, you could also type that number into Spotify and listen to a really good Logic song. So that's up to you. Fortunately though, especially with the massive amount of resources this game gives you, you can kind of cheese him by just using a lot of energy tanks. And he's technically not that hard compared to the other versions of Yellow Devil. He's actually kind of easier because you don't have the whole sprite flickering thing going on. You have the double gear, which you can slow down and make more powerful attacks. The crash bombs, or they're not crash bombs, but they're crash bombs, do really well on this. And there's like a second phase, which I thought was kind of cool, albeit a little bit tedious, like the Yellow Devil fight always is. The rest of the Wily stages, there's another big boss, which is pretty easy if you have the bounce ball weapon, which of course you do because you've beaten the game so far and that's what you get. You get the Robot Master weapons. There you go. He's pretty easy. And then you go straight into the Dr. Wily fights. Of course, Dr. Wily is always pretty challenging. He is, I think, mostly the hardest boss in any of the Mega Man games. And this one's not an exception. Of course, though, you can use E-Tanks and the weapons and all these kind of things, and it makes it a lot easier to get through them. I've beaten them a few times now, and I also really love these fights. I think they're designed really well, unlike past Wily fights, so take that for what you will. Now, I won't spoil the ending of Mega Man 11, but I will say, once you beat the game, you do get to go back to the store, unlock the items, which gives you double gear system infinitely and the weapons infinitely. This is amazing. There's also a couple of other things that I still need to unlock, so I'm not 100% done with this game. And there's plenty of challenge modes and stuff that you can also play if you're really, really into it. But I tried a couple of those out, and I think I'm just going to stick with the main game. I think it's really polished quite well. I think the story has some charm to it albeit a little bit, you know, quirky and stuff. But overall, I think Mega Man 11 is pretty great. I also should say that I did end up playing on casual mode. There are four different difficulties in this game. There's beginner mode, which is like they hold your hand. It's beautiful if you really just want to breeze through the game. Or if you're a three-year-old baby, you know, whichever one you want to play as. Then there's casual mode, which the only real difference between casual mode and normal mode is you get a couple more save points. You get couple more lives per stage and I think other enemies don't hit you as hard as they would in normal mode. Either way I don't think there's anything wrong with playing on casual mode. I might actually go back and play on normal mode because I think I've gotten decent enough at the game to be able to beat it there but it does become a little bit more difficult with the you know limited lives and save points and everything like that. And then there's superhero mode which I'm probably never going to touch. You have to go through each stage in one life and I I just don't have the time or the perseverance or dedication or will to live for any of that. The only other nitpick I have about this game is the music and wait a second, hot take, this just in, um, I changed my mind between writing this script and recording this. I actually really adore the music in this game. Originally I was going to talk about how it's not as good as the Mega Man 2 soundtrack and it's not got that classic rock feel and it's not, it's different, I don't like change. But I, I, I'm, I've changed my mind. I actually really, really enjoy the music in this game. It's not like the original soundtrack, but that doesn't make it bad. It's still really, really good. It's kind of like this electronic stuff. I, I guess my only nitpick would be the sound mixing in the game is a little bit weird. Like the music is too low and then the sound effects are kind of like stock sound effects that are annoying to listen to sometimes and they're a little bit too loud but I think you can change the volumes within the game so if that's an issue you can do that either way I listened to the soundtrack a few times while writing the script and 
in between writing it and recording this, I really enjoy the music. And I think anybody that's complaining about the music, either that's not their personal taste or they're letting nostalgia get in the way of great changes in the franchise. At the end of the day, I'm pleasantly surprised about Mega Man 11. I played the demo immediately when it came out and I was thinking, this is too hard. I don't know about the level design. Blockman is really cheesy. The voice acting is cheesy. The music isn't that great. Ree! All that good stuff as everybody does with any new game and franchise. But this is such a big improvement on a stale franchise. Mega Man has become stale. It's not really changed much within the years. And I'm going to continue to look at these games on the show to see if my statement right there is 100% true. But, but what I've seen, this franchise has become stale and Mega Man 11 made it really fun again. And so I think if you're going to get into this franchise, Mega Man 11 really is the perfect place to just jump straight into. It's not too hard, it's not too easy. There are difficulty modes and other resources that you can use to make the game easier or harder, depending on your ability. Not only that, but if you're a traditional Mega Man fan, you can still play this like a traditional Mega Man game and ignore all the new things. Although I don't know why you'd want to because that really does make the game more fun than most of the other games. I think Mega Man 11 might be my favorite game in the franchise now. It might be beating Mega Man 2. If not, they're at least really close together. And overall, I just think it's great that we can now play all of the main Mega Man games as well as the X series on one console, whether that be the Nintendo Switch, which I think is the definitive place to play it, or if it's on PS4, Xbox, or PC. You can really play all of these games now, and that's just really, really cool to me. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Did you enjoy this video and maybe you're thinking, Hey Zach, I want to know how to do the things you did in the video like video editing or thumbnail designs. Well, you're in luck because today I'm introducing you to Skillshare or maybe you've heard about Skillshare before, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it anyways. In today's world, everybody wants to be a YouTuber, but they may not know how to develop the proper skills that it takes to put out quality content on the regular you know, to please the almighty YouTube algorithm. You could be like me who took seven years of hard work and dedication to learn how to edit videos at least decently. Or you could use Skillshare, which is an online learning platform with tons of classes taught by some of the best teachers in their respective fields. In other words, if you want to learn photography, why not learn it from someone who's successful at photography? If you want to learn video editing, web development, writing, or more, Skillshare is the place to go. It's affordable, it's useful, and if you use the link in the description box below, you can get two free months. That's right, two completely free months, 60 days, completely free on me. So go children, go learn to be a better YouTuber than me. You can do it. That's all the time we have for today. If you're a mega, mega, mega man, then go ahead and hit that like button. If you're not, then your name is Dr. Wiley and you should probably leave. Go. Now. Either way, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're doing the show six days a week. I'm going to try my best to keep on that schedule and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.